understand that right now is a season of Thanksgiving. We're in between November and we're going through December. And it's so much Thanksgiving from Thanksgiving time until God giving birth and giving life and giving gifts. Amen. Amen. So I just want to spend time with you all and share a quick word. And I'm very thankful for this opportunity. Amen. Amen. First, giving honor to God who's the head of my life. Recognizing Reverend Copeland for the opportunity to be able to share with you all. Recognizing all the associates and all my men, all the family. Bree, I love you. Thank you for being here with me. But most importantly, we want to thank Ahava. Because I think y'all think that we just want to be here with you all and just because we have to be. But you got to understand that we're blessed by just being around you all. Y'all are giving us gifts. The fact that you want to come closer when she's saying And we can give you a word and we can talk about how great God has been. Because we outside and we're in church, but to come in and be with you all and fellowship with you all and have church, it means the most, it means everything to us and it's a great gift. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. Y'all bow with me. Dear God, I come to you as humble as I know how, just thankful for another opportunity to be in your presence, oh God. Lord God, right now as I come and bring your word, I want to just tell you thank you for giving me a word to be able to speak about, Lord God. For giving me a, giving me a son, Lord God, that has done everything for us and continued to keep us, Lord God. I just ask you to hide me behind the cross, Lord God, and speak through me, Lord God, to your people, Lord God. Thank you for everything you've done for us and everything that you will do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. There was a word from the Lord, amen. amen. And I want you all to follow me in John, third chapter, verse 16. So it's John 3, 16, amen. A very familiar passage. It's John 3, 16. Amen. I'm sticking by saying amen when y'all get it, amen. amen. So 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in his name shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God add a blessing to the hearers, the readers, and doers of God's holy word. Amen. Amen. I'd like to raise for a title today, The Gift That Keeps On Giving. Right. Amen. Amen. The Gift That Keeps On Giving. He gave, and he gave, and he gave. Amen. Amen. John 3.16 is one of the most famous verses in the Bible. Amen. The passage describes the true nature of God in his relations with the world. The fact that God is love. Amen. God's love is extended past Israel all the way throughout the world. Not only does it extend to only the people, but it also extends to the animals and everything they're in. Amen. Psalms 24 and 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and everything therein, the world and all who live in it. Now here's an example. Here's proof. I am beautiful. I'm not what I once was because I'm different, a different level and a different season. It has changed me. My past was necessary. My every second I once have been in has helped me evolve, helped me elevate, and has allowed me to spread my wings into who I am today. You can't imagine what I've been through. You can't imagine the heights, the depths, the valleys, the bumps, and the bruises. The things that I've seen through my lens, you could never imagine. At an earlier time, I was hidden, shut up in my own cocoon, hidden where I had no light. But now I'm able to fly. Who am I? I'm a butterfly. This is a picture of today's teachings that I've shown you that God has given us. He gave, he gave, and he gave. He gave his love, he gave us his son, and he gave us life. Love is defined as an intense feeling of deep affection. Love is great. Intense, it's pleasure in something. But the love that we share and the love that God has provided for us is very different. How do we love? How do we love everybody? Taking a moment and assess how we love and how do we love others? Sometimes we can be self-centered. We can be impatient without love. We can be unfair. We can be selfish, irrational, quick-tempered without love to others. Sometimes unreasonable, unwilling, and selective with how we love others. Amen? Not only that, how do we love ourselves? How are we loving ourselves? Sometimes we are hard on ourselves. Anybody been hard on themselves before? Self-doubt. Negative talking. Negative speech. Hurtful things that we say to ourselves sometimes, right? How do we love? It's important to note that how we love others and how we love ourselves is important to building the kingdom of God. Amen? The word of God says, Matthew 22, 37, verse 39, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, 
and with all your soul. And second, love thy neighbor as thyself. But before we can love our neighbor as ourselves, we have to understand how to love in general. Amen? Here's a lesson on love. The first point of the day is God's love. The text says, for God so loved the world. He could have said, he could have said, but God so hated the world. But first he led with love. Amen. God's love doesn't brag and it doesn't boast. It just is. And it's the love that went before us that saves us and protects us. God is love. Amen. When God so loved the world, instead of, the, and instead of that, he could have used, inside of that love, rather, is forgiveness. Inside of that love is peace. There's patience. There's grace. There's righteous anger. God gets angry sometimes, but it's a righteous anger because it's for you. Amen? It's a righteous anger. It's blessings. It's another chance. His love comes with benefits to top all of these benefits. He gave, he gave, and he gave. As we get on this Christian journey and we learn more about his love and how God provided for us, let's continue to walk the walk and understand his word. Amen? 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8 says, Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Amen? It always protects. Love protects. Always trusts. Always hopes. Always preserves. That's the love of God. Amen? Point two is God's gift. He gave, he gave, and he gave. God has already given us the victory. So what do we feel we've lost? What do you feel like you've ever lost in this life? Being here without the healing that you want to be in, you might feel like I lost something, I'm losing something. But God is a God to love so much that when you feel like you lose, God is only adding to it. So me losing my brother was a thing that, that I felt like I lost, but now understanding I'm able to walk and speak to people, I can talk to that. I can use that, the testimony to save and to help others. So God is always blessing and giving us more, even when we feel like we're losing, amen? So God is always present, he's always around, he's always protecting and in the blessing business, amen? But we have to realize that everything, God is constantly adding to us. Revelation 12 and 11 says, we overcome evil by our testimony and by our blood of the Lamb, amen? So it seems that we're losing, but God is always adding. When he spoke to Abram, he said, leave your country, leave your kindred, and leave your father's house. Leave your country, Leave your kindred and leave your father's house. That means leave where you come from. Leave everybody that you know, your cousins, your kin, your kin, and leave your father's house. Leave your, leave your father and his traditions and what he believes in. But it was only to make it greater. He told Abram, leave these things, but I'm going to make you a ruler of many nations, a father of many nations. Amen? See, I seen that he was taken from him, but God was adding to him because God loves you. That's God's love and that's God's gift. Amen? A rich man asked, what must I do to follow you, Jesus? And he said, sell everything that you have and follow me. But he couldn't do it. He thought that his possessions meant more than what Jesus had to offer. Amen? As believers and as, and as the disciples, he said, leave your families and leave your, leave your, families and your, pro your professions and follow me. And they went and they got Jesus. So it seemed like they was losing a job. And they felt like they was losing certain things. But when they were able to follow Jesus and become his disciples, they gained the Father. They gave they, they gain a comfort place that they can be in. Amen? Sometimes we lose some things so God can add some things. Amen? Sometimes we lose some things so God can add some things. Because why? Because he gave, he gave, and he gave. Amen? A perfect gift. But here's God's gift. He never puts more on us than we can bear. He never quite requires more from us than he's willing to give himself. Amen? He told Abraham, sacrifice your son Isaac. When he was willing to do so, God provided a ram in the bush. So it seemed like, oh, I'm going to lose my son. But God always understands what we need, and he'll provide. Amen? Amen? But in the same way, he told Abraham to sacrifice his son. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. His only begotten son. A gift from God. Not just any son, but his begotten son. His only son, Jesus Christ. The light of the world. Begotten is translated as one of a kind or unique. So when you say... He, he loved us so much he gave his only begotten son. It's a son that's one of a kind that was very unique, a special son that would give us life and life forever. Amen? That's the goodness of God. That's God's love. That's God's gift. Because he gave, he gave, and he gave. A special gift that comes from God. The third point is God's offer. God isn't asking us to do anything miraculous or anything too hard. He wants our heart and he wants our minds. 
He doesn't force us to do anything. God isn't a, a God that's saying, you're going to love me regardless. God wants to, he wants you to freely love him. He wants to give you what we call free will. He wants you to want to love him. Amen? Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son that whosoever believed in his name should not perish but have everlasting life. So believing in his name is believing in something. God has given us something to believe in. Amen? Believing in that has given us everlasting life. It's not just something simple. It's, great. it's much greater than we can ever imagine. Believing means to place full trust and full faith into one thing. Amen? And this is the offer from God. An example of that is, is this. I want you guys to pretty much repeat after me. Or just make it, make it, make it personal. Touch your heart. Touch your heart. I want y'all to make this personal. You don't have to repeat after me, but I just want y'all to make it personal. Amen? I am beautiful. I am beautiful. I'm not what I once was because it's a different level and a different season. It has changed me. My past was necessary. And every single second of who I once was, every single second of what I once was has helped me evolve, elevate, and allow me to spread my wings. You can't imagine what I've been through. You can't imagine the heights, the depths, and the valleys, the bumps, the bruises, the things that I've seen. At one point I was hidden in a cocoon, but now I'm able to fly. Who am I? And chosen. Amen. So before when I said that I was talking about a butterfly, but this time I said it, but it's talking about you. Yeah. God reveals itself in nature, in humans, Amen. in everything. God is everything. Yes. In the beginning I said God is in every single thing. Yes. He controls everything, everything therein. Amen. Yes. So when I talk about that, you being beautiful, this is these words from God. These are promises, okay? You are chosen. Yes. You're marked by God. You are healed. You are delivered. He cares for you. You are the lost sheep that our shepherd left 99 to come and get and save the one. Amen. To rescue just you. You are the one that you just one desire away from your destiny. God answers the desire of our heart. So when we talk about prayer, the, the special thing about being a shepherd is God hears our prayer. Amen. So you're one desire away from your destiny. You guys are here right now. You may be feeling down, but God hears your prayer also. You don't have to be driving. You don't have to be at a church, at a big church. God hears your prayers right here with you in this wheelchair. Amen. God loves you. You matter no less than anybody else in this world. You matter to him. And God hears your prayer. So it's very important that you pray to God all the time. And not just pray to pray, but desire it. A lot of people can just talk, 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 talk. God doesn't respect just the talking. He understands the desires of your heart. What you truly believe in and the fact that he truly cares. And if it matters to you, it definitely matters to him because you're his child. Amen. He gave his only begotten son so you'll have everlasting life. Amen. That's the greatest gift. And that's my message. Amen. Amen. Amen.